What's going on, my good people, man? Welcome back to another episode of the Najee Wilkins Show, man. I am blessed, honored to be with another standout guy. It just seems like every week I'm getting a, a standout guy to come on the show, man. So super blessed for that. But today we are featuring Tristan Lyles from Central Phoenix, Alabama. If y'all don't know about Central Phoenix, Alabama, y'all go look him up, man. They had a special season. Lyles was off the charts, man. He had 16 sacks, 84 tackles, 33 TFLs, 22 um uh kubi hurries and he won a lot of awards y'all a lot of accolades man asw all state max preps sophomore all-american recruit emu top 25 the list goes on and on and on but without further ado man let's bring him on Hello. what's going on Tristan? what's up what you, what you thought about the intro was the intro cool was it good it was straight. i like it i like it you like it okay okay good 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 yeah that, that, that's what i wanted man so Man, um, Tristan, just this, this tell the folks a little bit about yourself, man, a little bit about your upbringing, um, and, and just a little about Alabama football, man. Uh, first, I want to introduce myself. Well, you are introduced, but like, uh, my name is Tristan Lyles. Uh, I'm a 26. Uh, like, I like to say myself as an athlete, but like, I hate, but I, like, how to explain it, but like Alabama football, I like it. Uh, Alabama 7 8. I feel like we got a lot of competition. Uh, Thompson and Auburn, Opal, like I feel like those are competitive teams that we can compete against. And I feel like the team we have now and the team we had last year, I feel like we can definitely go back to back and win two state championships. That's what I feel like. In my heart. Okay. All right, so you know, <clears throat> excuse me. You no, know, we're gonna talk about a little bit about your team and what you got this upcoming this year with your teammates. Cause I want to find out a little bit about y'all guys. I mean, again, an incredible year. But I want to go now and shift kind of this, you know, kind of you football for you, man. Where did your love for football kind of come from? And and when you started playing, man, was it always outside linebacker, edge athlete? What was the first position you played? I started at I started playing football at the age of like four or five years. No, I ain't gonna say four or five, about six, six years old. I started at D Tower, you know, I was a little fat and chubby. So like as I got taller and slimmer, I started slimming down. I played defensive end, then I moved outside linebacker and started learning how to rush. I started learning how to rush in seventh grade, in the seventh grade, and I just kept elevating and elevating. And keep working a bit. Okay. And and then if you had to say, man, not not now in varsity career. But your youth career, who was the most kind of impactful coach for you? I'm gonna say my dad, because you know he's been coaching me from six, uh, seven years old all the way now. Because he's my high school coach now, so he's basically been with me my whole football career. For me now. Wow. Okay. So pops has been the one that, that made you to what you are today. Yes, sir. I love to see it. Okay. Now, I want to kind of ask you, um, kind of, you know. When you was coming up, just talk a little bit about kind of how your regiment was, man. Like, what were some things you were doing, um, you know, and and what were kind of things like your dad had you kind of harnessed on to kind of develop into your body and the man you are today? Uh, he he uh, was on me about like was like he was uh, putting me like going against older guys basically. Like at a young age, he had me competing with older guys. Uh, like like I would say I would be in like middle school. I go against seniors and juniors and sophomores. Just like like get myself better as a player and as a person love that love that okay now i'm going to kind of uh fast forward a little bit now kind of talk to me i mean man you, you you're a sophomore right not a lot of guys have the same success that you had last year as a sophomore okay they're not coming in out the gates first year varsity balling like you did man so talk about that mindset you kind of had going into the year and, and kind of how you were able to kind of put everything together man and and, and have an outstanding uh, season I had put God first, uh, like everything I did, and like, you know, I had, you know, put him first in everything I did. So basically, I just came in into the season like with a dog mind, like just like anybody I go against, like just dominate you, because you know, I feel like I had the teammate, my teammates. If, if I make running back cut back inside, and I, uh, I could depend on my teammates to make a play. So I think I was just out there doing my thing, you know, things like that. Okay. All right, I got you. Now, now I'm going to go back to a, a really big game you guys had. You talked about how good a football is down there where you had a 7A and playing up against some of those teams. Kind of walk me through, man, just just kind of re recount a little bit about that state championship game. What did you enjoy most about that game against Thompson? Man, Thompson, that, that was that was one of the most competitive games I've probably ever played. 
play in because, like, they got a real good team. Trent Seaborn, uh, all them kids, man. Like, it's like from soon we stepped onto the field, I knew, like, when I could look down, down, they it was serious. Like, I just knew it was gonna go come down to the wire and stuff like that because stepping onto that field, man, it was a great atmosphere and, like, yeah, we was getting uh, going after it. Yeah, no doubt. About- Yes, sir. No doubt about it. And, and, and let me ask you this, Tristan. When when did you know this central team was going to be, be be great, going to be special? What 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 point was it? Was it, you know, last year during, you know, spring practice? Was it during the summer? When did you know this central team could be um, a state talent contender? I knew, you know, that year, uh, 2023, 2022, that when we lost to Auburn in the uh, semifinals, I knew that when we came back from that, uh, that game, I knew we had to set the tone then and there. So that's how I knew we um, to go back to the NCAA championship. Because our mindset was just different. We was working every day, attacking the weight room, attacking the field, that spring training. It was just nothing to really show that we were going to be a state championship qualified team. Mm-hmm. So that, uh, that Auburn loss uh, kind of fueled y'all. It did. Okay. okay, I got you. Now let me ask you this a little bit about last year too. Just what was your favorite road trip with your guys? I know you guys had a bunch of them. A lot played in a lot of big games. What was kind of your favorite road trip with your teammates and you guys? It was, I want to say, I really want to say Hewitt, the first game, Hewitt, Prattville, and probably the last one, Thompson, because that's why I felt like we got closer bonds together as a team, you know, having fun on the road together and basically getting together and talking, you know, and getting closer with each other. Gotcha. Now I gotta ask from your teammates, man. Who's who's the most kind of like funny, kind of like goofy guy on the team that keeps always making people laugh and smile and stuff, man? Uh, I want to say it's gonna be between Dave Mike, Tristan Williams, or Andrew Alfred. Okay, between them two. Okay, or between them. All right, I got you. Now, now for for those that don't know, you you got to see him every day, right? You got to practice with him. You got to see him in the hallways. Um, I'm, I'm gonna talk about two names. One, I, I want to ask you about Cam Coleman, right? What, what, from seeing him every day, Tristan, going up against him, what, what makes him so special, man? What makes him different from the rest? Cam, like he had, like he come into the like Cam would be the first one in the facility, last one out. So basically, his mindset was different from everybody else. His like, like after practice, he would stay on the field, catch some extra balls on the ball machine. And basically, he'll, like, do extra stuff to make himself better. And his other teammate, Dylan Gentry, he'll be out there with him, you know, running around with him and catching balls as well. And, like, he did, like, almost everything right. He wasn't perfect, but, like, he was, a like, a person to look up to, basically, as, as for me. Got you. And then last one was um, uh, Dalen Upshaw. He also had a stellar season. Just talk a little bit about him. Same thing. What kind of just separated him uh, from kind of the rest? The same thing, the way they attack the weight room and classroom, all that, you know, his mindset was different as well. I feel like he's going to have a good season uh, this year. He's probably going to be one of his best, and I feel like he's just going to, like, break out this year, basically. And, you know, going to keep doing his thing, you know. Yeah. No doubt. And then, and then back to you uh, a little bit, Tristan. Uh, you know, you led your team in sacks, right? I think the best player defensively, without a doubt, on your team what this allows you to be so dominant as a pass rusher? I feel like studying my opponent, studying the offensive lineman, knowing how they kick, and uh, getting a game plan on my teammates so they can go out, so we can go out there together and forcing him to go either right or left. Uh, if he steps us in the pocket, I know Fager can be able to make a sag, or if Fager gets some pressure, make him uh, roll out the pocket, you know, allowing each other to make plays for each other. I feel like that's what we did best, and that's how, you know, we got to be able to win the championship. And I, we all made plays and did big-time things. And then for you, uh, Tristan, somebody had to ask you, be like, what, what is the best part of your game or part that stands out? What would you say? I would say my speed and my ability to get off the ball and rush. You know, I feel like my get-off is, is my best attribute. I feel like I can, you know, get around and, you know, make some shape for that. Yeah, I was going to actually ask you that because I think that's one of the best parts of your game too. You you get off your first step. So if you had to say, obviously, don't reveal all your secrets, man. But what is the keys that be able to have or to be able to perfect having a quick first step or being having that great get off like you do on your tape? Because I feel uh, 
I feel like the way that I train, like I've been, I've been training like myself to have a good first get off because you know every day in the morning, me and my teammate, the edges, we all work on get off every morning and before practice. Uh, then during uh, activation, we all we like work on sing get offs, kneeling get offs. We just always work on get offs. So that's how I feel like my first two steps will always be like dominant and fast and quick. No doubt. Now, one, a part of your game I think is actually underrated, man, is your power and your strength. Like, I watched some of those clips, man, and you're, you're a bull rushing dudes. Like, I mean, these ain't no small dudes, Tristan. These are big dudes, man, and you using your strength and your power, and you are mushing them out the way. So kind of talk about that, how you're able to, you know, your power and your strength and how you're able to kind of just mush dudes like that. So, like, so like coming from out my hips, using my speed to powers, because basically people watching me on film, you know, they know I got to get get off and they know I can have the ability to run past them. So, like, when they kick with me, so, like, if they, like, start kicking with me and getting back on me and going back into the quarterback, that's when I use my uh, strength and pull them back into the quarterback. And then the run game, you know, I can use my hips and, uh, you know, coming out the ball, striking them, sharing the block and making the play. No doubt. And, and then for for you, kind of, as you talked about that power and using your hips and strength and things like that, was that something you had to kind of continue to develop, you know, over the course of your career? Or was that kind of, you know, a part of your game you've always had? Uh, I had to develop it because, you know, in seventh grade, we didn't have the sleds and all that. It was like just like straight going against teammates one on one. I didn't have the technique and all that. So basically, when I got to high school, that's when it really started to kick in. That's when I'll be at uh, how to start block. Got you. Now let me ask you this, Tristan. What if you able to share? What 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 are you kind of squatting right now? What what's kind of what's kind of the bench press? What's the measurables kind of looking like? We haven't matched yet, but I'm going for like five twenty five on squat and bench. I'm probably going for like I'm gonna go with three fifteen. Ooh, we goodness gracious. Different breed. <laughs> All right, man. So we talked about your kind of your your, your, your regimen a little bit as a kid. What what does it kind of look like today? You know, how many days do you train? How many days are you kind of out in the gridiron? You know, kind of aside from doing it with your team. So I I train like we I get like my training at the school, but like I come out here and do footwork, you know, do some push ups, sit ups, you know, just to like. You know, build like build myself up. I come out here in the yard and do some footwork. You know, every here and now and then. Uh, you know, and come out here with my brothers and help them so they can get there, so they can get better as well. So I can help them like be like better than me. So you know, trying to keep the you know, yeah, trying to create. Yeah. All right, I got you. Now, now let me ask you this, man. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put you in the. I'm, 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 I'm gonna make you a scientist real quick, right? Now you in the lab, right? Now you trying to design the best edge rusher, outside linebacker, athlete that you can, right? What kind of quality? What 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 are you making that person or 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 that figure have to be an elite outside linebacker, edge athlete? So like, do you want me to like use people in the league, or you want you like you want me to just like apply like strength and stuff like that? Let's do both. Let's do let's do league and then and then let's do let's do uh with the qualities. Yeah, let's do league and then qualities. All right, so I'm gonna say I'm gonna go with Michael Parson, Hassan Reddy's get off, Michael Parson's strength. I'm gonna go with TJ Watts, uh hands, Max Crosby, you know, little shake and bake, whatever you say, you know, all that. <laughs> That's really about it. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Okay. So, so NFL wide, you go with them, and then, so that would be the perfect kind of um, uh, defensive end edge. Now, what qualities would you say that a great edge got to kind of have? I say he has to be able to have speed, the power, and I and I believe he has to be smart because if you can't play the game up here, then it's gonna be hard to play football. So I feel like speed, the power, you gotta have some intelligence. Mm, I like that. A lot of players say that. If you can say, did this describe for me or go in a little more detail, Tristan? What, what? Why is it important to be good up there? You know what I'm saying? Why? Why? Um, talk about the mental aspect of the game and why that's very vital. It kind of like you said, slept on part of the game. Why is the mental aspect important? Because you gotta be able to know your assignment. You gotta be able to know 
what the old line is doing. I feel like if you can know what the old line is doing, what your job is, you know how to set this up and know how to, you know, if you say how to turn and run, know how to hit the ball from behind. If you know how to do all those things, it'll make the game, you know, faster for you. And you, and you can, like, play faster and make more plays. That's, that's what I use all the time. You know, because a lot of my coaches say I'm a smart football player. That's why I make so many plays. I like that. Now, let me ask you this. We talked about kind of the, the, the ideal kind of edge, right? Is there anybody you model your game after or you like to watch collegiately or professionally and add different pieces to your game? I like watching uh, Tamarion Parker. He plays for Clemson. And uh, Hassan Reddick and Michael Parsons. Michael Parsons, yeah. Can't, can't go wrong with them, yeah. My, Michael Parsons is a different breed, man. Yeah, I, I love watching him. Yes, man. And the thing, the crazy thing, Tristan, he's not even a big guy. No, nah, he's not. No, not even big. And he still, you know, had an impact on the game. All right, now let me let me ask you this, man. I feel like people are starting to wake up to the Alabama football now. But for the most part, man, it's a slept-on state, bro. It's a slept-on state. So why do you think Alabama has been slept on for so long? And still, I think to a degree, it's still slept on. Comparing it to the, like the national media and why it doesn't always get the love when you guys are producing the the, the athletes, the players that y'all are. Uh, I really don't know because I feel like like mostly because like Georgia has like mostly like all the recruiting and like basically down there people pushing their guys and I like I don't feel like we have that down here in Alabama. People pushing their, uh, our guys like we'll have to go out of state just to get like recognition and stuff like that instead of like just doing it in state. Mm. Good point. Now, if you had to say, Tristan, you talked about kind of how Georgia pushes their athletes out there. Is it just is it just a lack of media doing that? Or is it just like there's not enough exposure, you know, camps and things around there in Alabama? It's, if you could walk me through that a little bit, why do you think that's the case? I feel like what you just said, uh, we don't have like enough like exposure and things around here in Alabama. Is not like that many camps going around around here. So I feel like. Georgia would mostly have like all of that stuff already prepared for their kids because like I feel like Georgia like pushes their kid like at a young age like in like seventh eighth grade start pushing them going to colleges uh, college visits and stuff like that. We uh, us kids in Alabama we start like late in like eleven twelfth grade so that's why. Okay, you put me on game, man. No, no wonder, man. Can't why can't wait that long, man. Y'all too good. Eleven grade, come on. And then the beast of a season you just had last year as a sophomore. Yeah, man. They, hey, man. The media got to get on it, man. Hey. <laughs> no doubt, man. Well, I just ask you a couple more. Obviously, with with, with just the the football part, I want to talk about recognition and then a little bit about recruiting. So, talk to me a little bit about kind of the. Um, well, the culture kind of at, at, at Central Phoenix, right? Tell me about kind of your head coach, the impact he's had on you, and then tell me about kind of your, your de defensive line coach, the defensive coordinator, what you have with them as well. I feel like Coach Nix is a great coach, uh, and Coach Hat, probably the two best coaches I'll probably ever have. And uh, Coach Mitchell and Coach Lyle, my dad, uh, they push me to my best ability. That's why uh, I can go out on Friday night. I do my new house of strain in the weight room and on the field, and therefore that helps me and things like that. Got you. Now, um, um, this year have have has Central Phoenix released their um their schedule yet? Spring or anything like that? They they released their uh, two uh like three three big games. I'm looking forward to uh Penson Valley, a school mm -hmm. from I forgot the name of it, and IMG. I'm really looking forward for the IMG game because. I feel like we got a chance to compete with them boys, so you know we're gonna go out there and do our thing. What y'all play IMG this year? I want to play a Georgia team so bad, but I guess it didn't happen. Look, I hope we uh, do it this year though. Y'all gotta play. Wow, so y'all play IMG, bro? That's gonna be must must see TV. Yeah, that's gonna be must see TV. Ooh, woo. yeah, man, that's that's fire, man. Love to see that. All right, man. So I'm gonna ask you a little bit about just obviously, like like, like I said, now you're getting a lot of recognition. A lot of people are, you know, talking you up, Tristan. Um, you competed in a lot of you know big time camps. I just want to get your eyes and kind of hear what you had to say about competing in some of them. Uh, recently, the All American National Combine that was in, I uh, believe, in January. I believe that was in Texas. Um, you you were awarded Most Outstanding Defensive Lineman. Just talk a little bit about the camps, some things you gleaned from there, and, and how much you enjoyed just competing with some of the the national prospects. 
Uh, I, I've been to the National Combine uh, two times, and I believe, yeah, I've been when I was in ninth grade and like, this year. So it's a great camp because, like, I feel like going against people all over the nation, you feel me? Uh, going against those guys definitely got me better. Going against from east to west coast and uh, up north, so I feel like those guys got me better. I feel like it's a great camp to go to and get exposure, you know, because it's a it's a long camp, but also you're developing it at the same time. Got you. And then, um, kind of talk about what it meant to you, man. Getting you know, kind of this recognition this year. Obviously, the big one was you know the Max Prep sophomore All American. That's not an easy list to make, but what did that kind of recognition just mean to you? Well, that meant a lot. It feel it, it it made me feel like that. I'm like not getting looked at, but I'm getting looked at at the same time. So, so that was a big mention for me. Uh, it really like I can't say it shocked me, but it did at the same time because you know I wasn't really expecting to make that list because of the exposure that we were getting down here. So I really ain't like respect for me to get that gotcha but, and then um you also was recognized at the all 22 camp which is the opening um uh competing with some great people i know you um competing against uh, mario nash four-star player heavily recruited in uh mississippi uh just talk about how that that camp was what did you enjoy the most about it uh i i enjoyed the coaching from it from the combine standpoint all the way to the end from uh to where all of us competed because I feel like everybody got better at camp. Everybody developed. Everybody took took something uh, with them to their to their high school. And I feel like uh, I definitely got better from that camp. No doubt. And the last one you got one I think that's coming up. You just got invited to the Magic City Showcase. Uh, just talk a little bit about that. I don't know a lot about it. That's why I'm asking. Um, just you know, where is that at uh, location? And there's just a little bit about the camp. Uh. It's in Birmingham. Uh, my uh, trainer, coach, my trainer, coach L, he uh, sent me the invite and wanted me to spread the word. So I get, uh, I'll probably be down there. And I got the rivals camp coming up too. And uh, I'm trying to get back invited to the uh, to the opening in Oregon. So I'm trying to get an invite as well to that. And the okay. go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I, I was saying the five star pro day, those three as well. Oh, five star pro day. Okay, I haven't heard about that one. Um. Where's that one at? Five Pro Day, if you don't mind sharing. I think it's in Atlanta. I think I don't know yet. I'm not sure. I just got invited to it. Okay. And then you said Rivals Camp. Which one? Because I know they got a bunch of invite. Which one are you trying to go to? That Rivals one. One in Atlanta. One in Atlanta. Okay. On August twenty. No, April next weekend. Okay. All right. I got you, man. All right. Now let's talk. Just go a little bit into recruiting, and then I'm gonna end the show. Actually, some fun stuff, man. So. Um, just for you, Tristan, how much you were just enjoying the process, man, being a sophomore, going to the rising junior season, just being on these campuses and being to see these different schools? Uh, I love it, you know, because I feel like my recruitment really is just getting started, and I feel like I'm going to have more offers coming in and things like that after this season. Or uh, Hopefully, after spring, I can get some more offers, uh, but I'm looking forward to it. I feel like I'm going to, you know, attack this summer, attack the weight room, Say everything so I can have a better season than last and just keep progressing and progressing and getting better. Uh, and how eventually, when I get to the next level, I can just keep developing, developing. And hopefully, oh, no. yes, sir. And then, if you can say just uh, what are some campuses you, you visited so far? Uh, I've been to Auburn, Ole Miss, Tennessee, Florida, Alabama, and that's it. All right, I got you. Now you visited, you know, remember from wrong, you visited a few that was in Georgia. So I just want to hit the Georgia schools real quick and then obviously get your eyes which ones you like the most. Um, but you went uh you visited Georgia Tech, man. Just talk a little bit about that one. What were your just your thoughts overall on the program? I love Georgia Tech. Um I love uh I love the facility, Coach Pope, all of them. Uh they was treating me well, you know, showing me around, things like that. I love the way they practice. Uh the intense was there. I love it. And um, basically, I just I love the campus up there, uh, being in Atlanta and things like that. Now let me ask you this, uh, uh, uh Tristan, did it feel like? Because I've asked a few recruits, he said um, they, they, it kind of surprised them the campus feel that it felt like they felt like it was just going to be in the city, blah blah blah. But a lot of them said that they kind of liked the 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 campus feel and it felt like an actual college. What what do you kind of glean from that? Was it kind of the same for you? 
Yeah, it felt like a college. Yeah, I feel like they was running them pretty well, and because of the way they treated their players and things like that, from meetings all the way to the field. You know? Yeah. Okay, and last one on take. Let's talk about the relationship you just building with Coach Pope, and you know, kind of what he, you know outline for you, and what he likes about kind of your game. Well, uh, Coach Pope, love, like he loves like my get off and speed. You know how I can use my uh, hand swipes and things like that. And uh, I feel like because you know they can't test us now, but I was looking forward to like building a relationship and, uh, with him in the future and things like that. But yeah. All right, got you. Now, another Georgia school, you went to Georgia State. It was, you know, in a new regime and everything, the coach, Dale McGee, to call it hashtag New Atlanta now. So how was that kind of visit? How much you enjoyed being, you know, uh, there and, and, and kind of learning about their program? Well, it felt great. I feel like Coach McGee is, like, going to turn, turn their program around. I feel like he's a good coach, and he's basically – he's going – he's most definitely going to turn the program around. I feel like that they, they are going to be a good team, hopefully this year or next year. Gotcha, man. And now, 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 you went to some schools. You talked about Auburn. You talked about Bama, uh, Ole Miss. What, which, which ones? Uh, well, obviously, I, I, I know the recruiting's still early, so I don't want you to say like, "Oh, this one's here, this one's there." But just, what did you enjoy about those campuses? If you go like just with each one, just Bama. Bama, I feel like because Bama, you told me to talk about Bama. Yes, sir. I right, gotcha. Uh, Bama, I like Bama. Uh, they um. They treated me well up there. Uh, I had a couple of teammates go with me up there. They, uh, uh, Donovan Crow, a 2026 running back. But Bama, they, I like the way they practice uh, from from the uh, meeting standpoint all the way to the field. I feel like they they, they attack practice very well. Uh, you know, I got to talk to uh, all the coaches and things like that. And yeah. All right, now Ole Miss. Ole Miss, uh, I got to talk to Coach, hang on, got a name Coach Jordan, yeah, I got to uh, talk to Coach Jordan. He said he was going to come down for spring and watch me and my other teammate come down there and compete. Uh, but I'm going to be back down there soon, I think. Yeah. I went real close to home, Auburn. Auburn, uh, Auburn, I like Auburn. They, uh, from Cam, from like watching Cam, you know, going out there, seeing him compete, it just made me feel like, you know, it was a good uh, campus. I know the environment was great down there when we went down there. Uh, they was treating me well and things like that. So, yeah. Okay. Last one, Florida. Florida. Uh, Coach Nate Pierre and Coach Peterson, I like them. They, they was uh, trying to see like, how much I'm going to grow and things like that. So, but I think they're going to be down for spring and watch me compete. Gotcha. All right. Now, I got to ask, man, do you have any official visits set up yet? No, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. No working that out. All right. Which, if you had to say, which campuses are you trying to go see, hopefully, this spring and summer? Uh, I was hoping to get down to the schools on the West Coast, like like UCLA, USC, um, Michigan State, probably – Arkansas, Oklahoma, uh, Wake Forest, Duke, North Carolina, all those schools like that. Got you. Last two on recruiting. If you had to say, obviously, it's still very early. Like you said, so many offers about to come in for you. Which is just which campus? Which has just caught your eye so far, or which ones have caught your eye so far? Uh, I'm gonna go with Tennessee, Georgia Tech. Uh, Tennessee, Georgia Tech, Florida, and Florida State. Got you. Last one. If you had to say, obviously, way early, but what would that ideal school, when you do a venture commit, you know, later down the road, what do they need to have for you, Tristan, in order for you to say, okay, this is where I'm going to spend the rest of my next three to four years of my career. This is where I want to go and get developed and potentially, hopefully, go pro. Uh, I just think I just need to have, like, a coach that can get on, get on to me and push me and – have me like push me to my best ability every play every rep and like basically every everything i do simple as that all right man now let's ask you fun stuff to end the show i think you'll like this segment it's one of my favorite ones for recruits athletes all right so when you get in that big time sack and you didn't dominate the duel at left tackle or right tackle whatever you want to say what is your favorite celly to pull off ah okay Either it's a, it's a it's a lot I want to do, 
So either I'm gonna like I'm gonna either roll the dice. I'm gonna oh like act like I'm holding up the world. So I'm like hold my hands up in the air like that, or I'm gonna like I'm gonna like you know air it out. I like that. I like that. Okay. It's got some good sellies. All right. Now let me ask you music wise, right? Music wise. Who is the best out right now? Okay. I'm not, I don't, I don't know. I listen to a lot of people. So I don't want to say Baby Kia because, you know, that's a little bit aggressive. So I'm not going to say, you know, I'm going to go with Young Boy. That's, that's I, I, you and every kid say young boy, man. You and everybody. Hey, Tristan, I, I didn't. I, I'm gonna ask you what separates him, though. Tristan, I didn't interview dudes from Bama, Texas, Ohio, Georgia, South Carolina. Everybody said young boy. Everybody said young boy. <laughs> Hello. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Y'all bear with me, man. Sorry. Connection is not the best. I'm going to try to get him back on in a sec. I think he connected. Hey, can you hear me? All right, I'm good. Good. Back. Can you hear me? Oh man, I'm not getting connected. Not the best. I'm a. I'm a texting. So, I don't leave and come back. Y'all bear with me, y'all. Try to get him back. Hold on. Tell him leave, come back. Uh, uh, try and leave. And come back. Turn him off. I heard something. Uh oh. Y'all bear with me. Appreciate the two tuning in, man. If y'all have a question y'all want me to ask them, uh, comment it in the comment section. No worries. All right, there you go. Yes, sir. I bro, live in the country. Yeah, no worries. Right. Yeah, I know how it is, man. Sometimes the phone man be tripping, even though we got all this technology. You think it'd be still going uh, smooth, but you messing up sometimes. <laughs> My fault, yes, sir. No worries. Bro. Good man, you good. Um, but yeah, back to what we were saying, man. This 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 hot uh, button discussion. So I left off. So, like I said, I talked to players from Texas, Florida, Georgia. South Carolina, North Carolina, Ohio, and they say NBA young boy, man. So for you, what makes him different from the rest? It's like the way he rap. He know how to like change the flow. Like he'll have he'll be angry one time. He'll like he'll be angry one time. He'll be in his feelings a couple. You know, he's like come down to females. You know, he doing talking through things like that. So basically, I just like him because he like you know how to you know whatever moods you in. He basically has a song for. It. Interesting. Okay. All right. And then if you had to say, what is your favorite young boy song? I want to say, I don't know. Or 
or slime and talent? I'm Italian. I don't know. I listen. Okay. No, go ahead, go ahead. I was just saying, I was listening up for the game. I ain't hiding, so like, you know, you feel me? Because, yeah. Okay, so 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 that so that's the playlist before you get get going. For, I was just about to ask you that, like like what you listen to uh, pre game to get ready to go. Uh, I listen to a lot of stuff like Young Boy, Baby Kia, uh, Lil Baby, uh, the Migos, all that. Basically, sound like the like crank me up, basically, like a light like light of fuel and light of fuel. All right. Now let me ask you this, man. When, when you win, when you win the game, man, well, what's your favorite move to kind of pull off, man? If you like, man, like let's say, let's just say it's a game and it's tough, right? Like they, they, they're not going your way. Um, you know, offensively going a whole nother way because they don't want to, they don't want to deal with you, right? And you want to pull off a move, you're a little frustrated, you want to pull off a move to get to the quarterback. What's that move you're pulling off? A uh, cross chop. Mm-hmm. Why the cross chop? That, that's like the move I've been like working on the press and the most, and that's like one of the moves I always hit. If like uh, if it's the move, that's the move I'm going to jab cross jab. Cross, like All right, now, let me ask you this: Central Phoenix then got a big win, right? Your coach like, look, man, y'all y'all just got this big win. I'm gonna take y'all out. You know what is the what is the what are you gonna tell coach? Look, coach, this is what I want to eat. This is what I want to eat at. What is the favorite post game meal spot? You had to say, and what's the order you getting? Okay, so it ain't gonna be nothing in Phoenix City. I'm telling you that we'll have Columbus and get something to eat. So we'll go like to Longhorns, and I get a Parmesan crusted chicken, yeah, with like a side of macaroni cheese and rice. You can't go wrong with that. That's that's good eats right there, man. That's good eats right there. All right, a couple more fun ones. Um, let me see, let me see. Um, all right. Let me ask you this. What do you think is the best clothing brand in the game right now? Clothing brand? Clothing purple. Brand. The uh the jeans. Purple brand. Okay, okay, now now you young. I'm a, I'm not old. I'm not old, <laughs> but I'm a little older. <laughs> I'm still in my twenties. But what's purple, bro? You gotta put me on game. They're like they're like uh, like a pair of jeans that like I don't see what's so special about it, but I, I like them like it's like they're like really a nice pair of jeans, and I go like I'll probably put on some Jordans with them or something like that. Uh, okay, so purple. I'm gonna do my research on that purple, and then you'll put them on with some J's. All right, bet you to put me on game. All right, let me ask you this, Tristan. If you were not playing football, right, and you were doing something else, what else would what else would Tristan Lyles be doing? I'm an athlete, so you know, I play baseball, basketball, football. I played mm-hmm. soccer when I was younger for footwork. Uh, you know, I could really play anything. I'm happy. Okay. Now, if you had to choose, football's out of the equation. What's the other sport you're gonna pick? Okay, so uh, basketball. I want. I'm not. I won't have the height, but if I had to, it would be basketball. Yeah, I I, I could see that. I could see that. I could see you out there. You know, obviously, I could see you out there just booming on people, giving them facials. <laughs> Just giving them facials. <laughs> I'm a shooter. I'm a shooter. I don't do all that. Oh, you don't do all that? What? I I go in the paint. You know, give you a little body. You feel me with the shoulder? You know, but besides that, you know, I'm gonna let that thing fly. <laughs> uh, you know, see, I would see. I wasn't even expecting that. I thought you gonna be in there, man. I'm gonna use that strength, that body. I'm yamming on you. <laughs> all right, man. Last two. I'm gonna let you get out of here, man. Um, kind of what, what what is your goals? I, I think you kind of mentioned that at the top, but uh, the audience was listening. What's kind of your goals for 2024? Let's go individually and then also uh, uh, team wise. Uh, individually, I'm going for 20 sacks, 20 sacks uh, this year. I'm going for 80, I'm going for like 90 tackles. I'm going for like 30 TFL. And team wise, I'm trying to win, I'm trying to. Win state championships as long as I'm here. I'm trying to go, I'm trying to like three P. That's what I'm trying to do. Trying to three P. Okay. All right. Now, obviously, you, obviously, Dalen, put us up on game, Tristan. Who, who's some guys we should watch for Central Phoenix next year? Next year, you talking about when the 2025 class here? Yeah, tw- it could be, it, it could be 25, it could be 26, 27, just guys that, that you see every day that we don't know about. Uh, so I'm gonna say I'm gonna say we well, all know about Mal, uh, Tristan Williams, Andrew Alfred. Uh, I'm gonna go with 
Davion Bennett, uh, Donovan Crow, 26. Javion Patterson, 26. Uh, I'm going to go with – well, our 27 class is loaded too as well. They're, like, like loaded. They're, like, real loaded. So, like, I'm going to name some of them. Michael Bass, uh, uh, Jaquan Jones, Brandon Brown, TJ Ware. Uh, uh, who else? Dang, I can't say a nickname. Uh, I don't know. Elijah Brown. That's a lot of them boys. All right. Bet that. All right. Pretty sure you put me up on games so guys can start scouting, obviously, besides yourself. Um, start looking forward to getting some exposure to. And la- last one, man, Tristan, what, what do you kind of want um, your legacy kind of to be, man, if you had to say, whether that's on the field, off the field? What what do you want, you know, that Tristan Lyle's name to kind of mean um, if, if, you know, before it's said and done? Uh, so I want – when people think of Tristan Lyle, I want them to think of an uh, intelligent black man. Uh, I want him to think that that he was a good football player. He was smart. He was nice. He know how to treat people, and things of that nature. He was a Christian, all that. Love to see it, man. Well, Tristan, I appreciate you taking this time out of your busy day and your busy schedule uh, to sit here and talk with me, man. I really enjoyed the interview, and uh, I want to say good luck this season, man. I know you're going to show out like you always do, man, and I uh, appreciate your time. Wait, I got a question for you. What you say? I got a question for you. Okay, go ahead. So how long have you been a Bengals fan? <laughs> Man, all right. So look, I, I've been I've been a fan since I was okay, since I was eight years old. Do you you want you want the full backstory? Yeah, let me let me hear it. Let me hear it. All right, all right. So the backstory is you're gonna laugh, man. So originally, so my pops, right? My pops is an Eagles fan. Okay. So I they like, how the hell you get Bengals and he's an Eagles fan? Like I tried with Philly. I was a fan. Man, they was losing a lot. I just like, eh, I ain't feeling them. So then I fell in love with Brett Favre, all right? Brett Favre was my guy. Like I was a Packers fan for a little bit, for a little minute. I remember I'm young now. I'm like four or five years old, okay? So I, I was a big Packers fan. Then Brett Favre leaves, and he goes to Minnesota. So they got this young kid, Aaron Rodgers. I don't know him. I, I didn't think he was going to be a future Hall of Famer. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, Brett Favre's my guy. I don't like him. Then it was this guy right here. That changed it all for me, man. I've been a fan ever since. Chad Ocho Cinco. I know he's crazy, man. The celebrations, the Hall of Fame jacket. He made me like a, a pretty much man a fan for life. And then um, now, obviously, we got them two right there, uh, Joe Burrow and uh, Jamar Chase. So, uh, yeah, man, whatever happens to the Bengals, I'm always going to be a fan, man. But he, that guy right there, he changed it. Actually, let me show you this. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was a big impact, I see. Yes, been, been a fan ever since, since I was young. I've had this probably since I was like 19 years old. <laughs> yes, sir. That would be in your top 10 for uh goals, wouldn't it? Yes, yes, yes. Now, people gonna be like, nah, nah, you wrong. You don't know sports, you don't know football. But yeah, he's a top 10 goal for me. Now, he might not ever get in, bro, but he's definitely <laughs> one of my goals. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, before I let you go, who are you, who are you a fan of? I'm, I'm a bandwagon. I can admit that right now. I'm a bandwagon. Uh, uh, come on, Tristan. Bandwagon. But, like, I, don't, I really don't know who. I don't really, like, know who I want. Because, like, I don't want to have it in my mind now because when I get there, I ain't really going to, you know, the team the team that I get drafted to, that's going to be my favorite team. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Okay. All right. I, I just hope for I let you go. But, I hope you got it. But I was little. I was like the Falcons, though. Because when they had Julio. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. It was it. Hey, they wasted his career though, man. They should have won the chip. They blew that 28 3 lead. Yeah, that's what I don't get. I was crying after that. <laughs> like, yeah, man, I don't know how they did that. All they had to do was run the ball, bro. Run the ball. I ain't even no time Brady had it in him. I ain't gonna lie. Hey, that, that, hey, that's why he to go to the sport, man. La- last one, last one for real. What do you think about the Kirk Cousins signing for the Falcons? Now, they, they, I don't think they're gonna. Make uh NFC championship or AFC, whichever one it is, but they they probably gonna make the playoff. Or if they don't make it, they're gonna have a, a decent record. A decent because they got B John, Kyle Pitts. Yeah, they, they should make some shape with this line over here. That roster, they should do something. I agree, man. They should make some shape. We're gonna see though, man. Hopefully, Kirk can stay healthy and at least beat the same. That turn Achilles is tough at that age, but I agree with you. They should make a I think they should make a deep, bro. They should make it an NFC championship game for sure. But uh, man, thank you, Tristan. Man, I uh, appreciate talking to you, man. Uh, good luck, man. Let's stay in touch, man. 
Um, and Lala, this be the last one, man. I really enjoyed talking to you, getting to know you. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, guys. So there he goes, man. Um, he's not gonna be a stranger, man. Uh, we're gonna definitely bring him back on, probably mid season, late season. Uh, but we're gonna keep that 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 relationship going, man. Uh, the kid's a dog. Y'all go roll his tape. I mean, bull bashing guys, fast off the edge, kick and do it all, man. And he's gonna be a national name. Like he just is. He's only rated on I think might be rivals. The kid gonna be on every platform. ESPN, um, O and three. Um, was it obviously Rob was two for a set? He's gonna be, I'm telling y'all, they're gonna be rated. So, y'all want to get in early on the kid? Go watch him. You know what I'm saying? This is what the show does. Like, I'm telling you, y'all go get to know that name, Tristan Lyles, man. Definitely is an NFL caliber talent, man. But that's all we got, man. Appreciate everybody tuning in. I'll be back soon, man. Hope y'all enjoyed the episode. And y'all know where to find me, man. All the socials down below. Najee, welcome to every platform, and I'll see y'all soon. Peace. <laughs>